we're going to be solving systems of linear inequalities. It's very much like graphing two lines and finding where they cross, except there's an extra step. So watch what I do carefully. Now at this point, for those of you who used this calculator in high school, you probably already know a trick that will save you an enormous amount of time. Maybe. Which doesn't mean you can't still get it wrong. There's a problem in apps. Here's apps. Oh, I don't have it because it's the free online version. Okay, yes, this is WebEdemu, and I strongly recommend it. But I don't have that. Those of you who studied this in high school probably have inequals on your uh, calculator, and you probably know how to use it if you had uh, Algebra 1, for instance, or Algebra 2 in, uh, in high school. So you can certainly use it. It's fine with me. I, however, am going to do this by hand. Now, this is what I'm going to do. There are steps to doing this. Watch what I do. I'm going to rewrite this as a straight line. This is not a straight line. Well, it is a straight line, but it's also an inequality, which means you shade one side or the other, and you would have done this in beginning algebra. Well, we're just going to do it to two of them. So if you don't remember doing it in beginning algebra, it's no big deal. You're going to learn it now. Okay, the first step. The first step. Step one. is to rewrite each of these inequalities as a straight line. Here's how you do that. You change the inequality sign to an equal sign, and it becomes a straight line. Okay, and y equals 6 minus x. That big boom freaked out my cat. So what does a cat do when she's freaked out? She jumped up beside me and bit my arm. It's my fault there was that thunder. Of course it's my fault. Okay, now, what I have to do is find two points that are on each of these lines. Each of these lines has an infinite number of points, but we only need two for each of them. So I'm going to make an X and a Y table. Now, I can choose any number I want for X. How about 0 and 2? Now I go up here. If X is 0, then Y is 0 because x and y equal each other. If x is 2, then y is 2. I now have two points. However, I wanted to do this in blue. Because one of the real fun things to do, especially if you have kids at home, is to do this with your kids and use their crayons. You'd be teaching them to graph and having fun yourself. I'm going to graph this line in blue. 0, 0, and 2, 2. Here's 0, 0. And here is 1, 2, 1, 2. Here's the point 2, 2. Now. Need to make this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to draw. 
draw a line through these. Kind of have to do it a weird way when you're doing it on a tablet. There. This is the line x equals y. Now I'm not done. Because this is not y equals x or x equals y. This is really y is less than or equal to x. When you're dealing with linear inequalities or you're graphing any kind of inequality, remember this is logistics. If you learn this, you can have a very well-paying career. In fact, NWAC is one of the few schools in the country that offers a degree in logistics, a two-year degree. Then the problem is going on to a university and getting a four-year degree because everybody's already trying to hire you. Life has problems. We should have so many problems. What I have to do now is find a test point. This, incidentally, is step two. A test point can be any point anywhere, just not on the line. Can't be on the line, but you can choose a point anywhere. Now, this is a little silly, so let me erase these and try not to erase my lines and my axes, at least erase most, most of them. There, that's good enough. I propose, how about that point? Except let's make it a nice, easy to find point. This would be negative two, positive one. Now, what I have to do is plug a 1 in for the y. Oh, my test point. Yes, I should write that down. I'm going to take the 1 and plug it in for y. And the negative 2 and plug it in for x. This says that 1 is less than or equal to negative 2. That's not true. That's false. Positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. So this is a false. What I'm going to do in that case is I know that if this side of that blue line is false, or it gives me a false, if even one point gives me a false, all the points on this side of the line will give me a false. I want a true. I want a shade on the true side. Any point over here will give me a true for the blue line. So let us shade over here. Now you can do much better on paper, of course, because you can get a crayon. Let your kids do it. Get a crayon or your little brother or sister or somebody. Let them do the shading. It'll make a good impression on them. Oops. There. We're done. We're done with the first line.
the first linear inequality. Let me kind of draw a little thing around that. And now, what should I do? I don't want to use red because too many people can't see red. So I am going to use this reddish purple. That way it's got enough blue so that somebody who can't see red can still see it. And if you can't, please email me and let me know. I'll change colors. That's the good thing about a tablet. You have almost as many colors as you can imagine. All right, now y equals 6 minus x came from y is greater than or equal to 6 minus x. I need to make an x and a y table. Well, you can tell that I am not very good at drawing lines. Let's just do it this way. Okay. Now, I can choose any two numbers I want. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can choose any two numbers I want for x because x is the independent variable. Remember that? You've heard that before. x makes y happen. x is more important than y, but don't tell y. Okay, um, oh, let's do a negative one. How about negative one and positive three? Ooh, that's ugly. Negative one and positive three. Now, if, 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 why if x, excuse me, if x is negative 1, then y will be 6 minus negative 1, which is 6 plus 1, which is 7. Okay, we're going to have to be very careful here. If x is 3, this is easier, y is going to be 6 minus 3 which is 3. So two points on here are going to be negative 1, 7, and 3, 3. Now let's plot those points. Negative 1 is right here. Go up to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice I didn't put a point there. Don't do that. You go to negative 1 and hover over it. Then you go up. You count up 7. Then you put your point. That's called rectilinear motion. Moving in a rectangle. Okay, so there's one of our points. Now the point 3, 3. We go 1, 2, 3. Three, one, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to draw a line, but it needs to be thicker. Ah, uh, two or one. One's okay. All right, so there we go. Okay, I'm going to start here. Oh, eh. Start here. Go here. And then the other way. Only because it's a tablet. If, you, if I had a ruler, I'd only have to make one line. <laughs> all right, I I am, oh, all right, try it again. <sighs> that 
that one. There. Almost perfect. All right, now again, I need to choose a test point. It can be any point not on the red line. It could even be on the blue line. Let's, um, I don't know. How about this? How about this point right here? Let's see what that point is. That is the point negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, this point is negative 5, 6. Okay. Now, I am going to write it in. Oh, let's come over here. Y is greater than 6 minus X. Greater than or equal to 6 minus X. So I take the 6 and I put it in for Y. I take the negative 5 and I put it in for X. You're kidding me. That's going to be 6 plus 5, which is 11. So we're saying the untruthful thing. 6 is greater than 11, which means... Oh, it's not a bad thing, is it? Which means that this point gives us a false. Here's the red line. So if false, if we're false over here, we're true over here for the red line. So again, I'm going to shade. This is kind of fun. Now at this point, I know what the solution is to the inequality. It's this triangle in here. Yeah, it is. because it's got to be where the two colors overlap. And that's in here. That's the solution. Now, on my math lab, what you're going to do is, there's a little paint bucket icon. You're going to drag that over to this triangular area and click. And that will release yellow. I think it only goes yellow. If you can find a way to make it a different color, I would love to know. Okay, that's, that's part of the question, but it's not all the question. That's the graphing part. You're going to do that first. Then you're going to find the vertex, which we can see here is 3, 3. And we could actually probably tell from the graph if you're making an accurate graph. But suppose you're not. We're going to solve the system. We're only talking about where the line parts intersect. So we're going to say y equals x, y equals 6 minus x. Now, remember last semester when you learned about substitution? This is absolutely the best time to use substitution because y equals x. So we can rewrite line 2. Here, look, this is line 1, this is line 2. We can rewrite line 2 
as x equals 6 minus x, because y equals x. So now add 6 to both sides. Uh, add, no, don't do that. Add x to both sides. So we'll have 2x equals 6 plus 0, which is 6. Then divide by 2 and divide by 2. x equals 3. There's always a feeling that you're done. Once you get x equals the number, you're not. We're finding a point here. We have to have an x and a y. So the x is 3, but we don't have the y yet, unless you want to guess. And I've had points off for guessing when I was a student. So you don't want that to happen in case you're wrong. So let us go back. Actually, it's really easy here. If x is 3, well, clearly y is 3. So whatever x is, y is going to be, and that's how we get the answer 3, 3. x is 3, y is 3. They're equal because of this equation and this inequality, actually, because there's also the equal to part. So this is really quite fun. I enjoy doing this, and your kids will if you have children. Now, we're going to use the same steps. Step one. We have these linear inequalities. x plus y is less than or equal to 3. x minus y is less than or equal to 1. OK. x plus y equals 3. x minus y equals 1. Those are straight lines, the equations of straight lines, okay? Where the shading comes in is when you're working on the inequality, but first we work on the straight lines. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make an X and a Y table. And choose any two numbers I want for X. Well, let's make them easy. If x is 0, then you'll have 0 plus y is 3, so y is 3. If x is 3, look what happens. You'll have 3 plus y equals 3. Subtract 3 from both sides. You'll have y equals zero. Doggone, is that easy? Those are the intercepts. So three, zero, three, and three, zero. Here's zero, three. And here is one, two, three, zero. And draw a line. Connect them up. Well, yeah, we're going to have to settle for almost perfect. Okay. <laughs> All 
I'm fighting the urge to redo it. Okay, now, step two. Write it black. Step two. We're going back to what this really is. X plus Y is less than or equal to three. I'm going to choose a test point. But now, unlike the last time where my line went through zero, zero, the line here does not go through zero, zero. So I'm going to choose zero, zero as my test point, which is always the easiest test point. Zero plus zero is less than or equal to three. So zero is less than or equal to three. That's true. It's not equal, but it's less than. So this is true. That means this true is going to make me shade on this side of the blue line. Oh, cute. Okay, okay. You get the idea. Okay, all right, it's not great art. I admit it. Maybe it's very abstract. Maybe that will go for millions of dollars in the future. You never know. Okay, I'm going to try that trick over here. If X is zero, then Y, ah, but Y has a negative one in front of it. Okay, but let's do it anyway, because that's always a little bit easier. I'm gonna go through the same step one here if x is 0 and if y is 0. Okay, if x is 0, we'll have 0 minus 1 y equals 1. Divide both sides by negative 1, and you get negative 1. Not real clear, but negative 1. Okay. Now, if y is 0, we're going to have x minus 0 is 1, so x is 1. So, 0, negative 1 is right here, and 1, 0 is right there. There's our line. Now, I go back to the original inequality, which is step two, x minus y is less than or equal to one. And notice that zero, zero, well, that the red line does, well, it's purplish red, does not go through zero, zero. So I can use zero, zero for the reddish purple line. Zero minus zero is less than or equal to one. Again, we're going to have a true. You don't always have a true with zero, zero, but you do here. I love it. True. Now, what does that mean? Well, zero, zero is on this side of the reddish-purple line. 
So, I shade the true side. Okay, now all that's left, oh, oh, wait, this, oh, I should change colors, that would be good. Drag your little paint bucket over here now. Incidentally, you have to do this on paper before you copy it onto my math lab. It's much easier that way if you know where to drop your paint bucket before you even start. Now, all we need to do is find, and again, it was very exact, but if you're doing this by hand, it won't be that exact. So you're gonna have to probably solve the system to find the point, the vertex, which when you only have two lines, that's the vertex. <clears throat> when you get three lines, it's a, a, a three inequalities. It, it can be a little more, um, more work, more vertices. Can be. All right, so we are going to solve this system. Let's see where I've got the most room. Line one. is x plus y equals 3, and line 2 is x minus y equals 1. This is perfect. I don't have to multiply either line by any number because y minus y will zero out when I add the x's, the y's, and the constants x plus x is 2x, y minus y is 0y, 3 plus 1 is 4. So 2x equals 4, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 2. Now, take this x equals 2 up to either of these original equations. Um, how about line 1? It looks easier. Maybe it's not. 2 plus y equals 3. I really need to save space, so I'm going to move the 2 over. And then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, so I'll have y on the left. 3 minus 2 is 1. So the x is 2 and the y is 1, and that gives me this point, 2. One. Sometimes you can tell just by looking, sometimes you can't. Remember, you can always go backward. All right, this is one of those times when you cannot just tell by looking. Right here, look at that answer. We're going to go through all the same steps. That's the button you click when you're ready to graph, but you need to graph it on paper first. Again, so that you can see 
so that you'll already have your points to plot, so that you can draw your lines, and you'll be able to bring your paint bucket to the correct place. Step one. Two Y minus X equals two. Notice their X's and Y's are backwards from the way you usually see them. Not a big deal. Whoops. Y plus five X equals a uh, Barbara, wake up. This is not a good sign. Y plus 5x equals negative 2. Equals means you're just going to graph the lines. You make an x and a y table and find yourself two points, just like back when you were learning to graph. Okay, now over here, this is not going to be too hard. If x is 0, uh oh, if x is 0, then we're going to have 2y equals 2. Divide both sides by 2, y equals 1. And if y is 0, then x will be negative 1 times x equals positive 2. Divide both sides by negative 1. You can also multiply both sides by negative 1. But that'll give you x equals negative 2. So there are your two points. For the blue line, the blue line's going to be a lot easier to graph. Zero, 1. Always put your parentheses. And negative 2, 0. Okay, so negative 2, 0 is right here. 0, 1 is right here. Great. Okay, now I'm going to choose 0, 0 as my test point simply because it is my favorite test point because it's so easy. Let's come over here for this. Step 1. 2. Step 2. We go back to... 2y minus x is less than or equal to 2. Sounds like the storm is over. Okay, now, 0, 0. That'll be 2 times 0 minus 0 is less than or equal to 2. Well, of course that's true. 0 is less than or equal to 2. True. 
So for the blue line, I get a true from using 0, 0, which is on the bottom there of the line, if you want to think of it that way, below the line. Darn it. All right. Okay, now we're done with that line, with that linear inequality. This right here is the graph of 2y minus x is less than or equal to 2. Now right on top of it, I'm going to solve y plus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 2 by first finding two points. Okay, if x is 0, that's easy. We'll have 5 times 0 is 0, so y equals negative 2. What's not so easy is Okay, if I let y equal something, how do I know, know that x will go into it evenly? No, that's not going to work. What we're going to have to do is use x for both numbers. So how about x equals 1? Then y will equal, well, no, y plus 5 equals negative 2. Subtract 5 from both sides. You'll get y equals negative 7. Sometimes it's just easier to do it that way. You really don't want to try to graph fractions. So 0, negative 2, and 1, negative 7. Boom, 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 boom. You practice with that, try different combinations, you can get it. Just had another drink of coffee. Okay, so zero, negative two. What do you know? Double check that. Yeah. Zero. Negative two is going to be right there. Well, I guess we know where the vertex is going to be. And one, negative seven. So come to one on the x-axis. Do not put a point, but hover over it. Even if you're doing it on paper, don't touch your pencil down. Just hover. And then go down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the point 1, negative 7. You go to 1 and down 7. Okay. For 0, negative 2, I put it in the wrong place. Heck, let's make that blue again. Shows I'm getting tired. When you get tired, these things happen. 0, negative 2 is here. Also shows it's a really good idea to double check your work. Okay. Hmm. 
I am far from being perfect, children. What can I say? All right, now we're going to do this again, but I don't like how close zero, zero is to that line. I can still use zero, zero, uh, but I don't think I will, just because I don't feel good about it. How about the point zero? One, two, three, four, five. For no special purpose at all, I'm going to use zero, five as my test point. Okay, so over here for step two, we're going to have y plus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, 0, 5. 0 goes in for the x. Five goes in for the y. Is greater than or equal to negative two. Zero, five. Okay, so that'll be five plus zero is greater than or equal to negative two. It certainly is greater than, right? Five plus zero is five. Five is definitely greater than negative two. So this gives me a true. I didn't know that. I really didn't know it. Okay. So. Anyway, by now, you can tell where the colors overlap. That's the solution to the inequality. There's no way to write an answer out like uh, something with parentheses around it. So it's enough if you're coloring. I forgot this on the first one. But yeah, just make it a different color. Right. So we go up to the red line. All right, that's where you're going to drag drag your um, paint bucket, okay? Your paint bucket, your little paint bucket icon or avatar, but it's not alive. So, I mean, I think of avatars as being like animals. Okay, now, that doesn't mean I'm right. This, I have to put another page on here because this is going to be a little more trouble. Notice that that's the point of intersection. And it's not an even number. In fact, it's fractions. If you didn't know the answer going into it, you'd never just look at it and figure it out. So I'm going to insert another page. There. All right. And I am, so that I don't make a mistake, how could I ever make a mistake? Anybody can make mistakes. It's too bad. Ain't none of us perfect, that's for sure.
trying to make it clear. All right, now. Now we're just going to go back to good old black and white. I need to find out where those lines intersect. 2y minus x equals 2 and y plus 5x equals negative 2. This is line 1. And this is line 2. I believe it would be easier if I multiply line 2 by negative 2. So that, let me put a little implication line. This, the negative 2 thing makes that happen. This will be negative 2y minus 10x equals positive 4. And I'm going to leave line 1 just the way it is. 2y minus x, which is minus 1x, equals 2. 2y minus 2y is 0y. Negative 1x plus negative 10x is negative 11x equals 6. 0y is 0, so we'll have 0 minus 11x equals 6 which is negative, I know I'm going to a lot of steps here, that I don't need to go to. Negative 11, negative 11. The negative 11s cancel out on the left. X equals negative 6 over 11. Is that right? All right. Now, I could take a look at that answer. Is that a pretty answer? No, it's not. So, I really am not looking forward to having to take, excuse me, negative 6 elevenths and put it in for one of those x's. So, you know what we can do? We can use elimination again and eliminate the other letter. Now, what we did before, up here, we eliminated Y. Now, I propose to eliminate X. Line 1. 2Y minus x equals 2. Line 2, y plus 5x equals negative 2. Okay, now I want to eliminate x. So there's no choice here. I'm going to have to multiply line 1 by 5. So that I'll get a negative 5x here, a positive 5x here. And when I um, add them together, I'll get 0. Sounds good to me. So what that's going to give me is 10y. minus 5x equals 10. And down here, I'll just have y plus 5x equals negative 
2. This is one y. 10y plus 11y plus 1y, yeah. 10y plus 1y is 11y plus 0x equals 10 plus negative 2 is the same thing as 10 minus 2, which is 8. 0 times x is 0, so we'll have 11x. equals 8 divided by 11 divided by 11 so x equals positive 8 over 11 and that's right Okay, that's it for week 2A homework. You can scroll scroll back, is that the right word? Roll back the video and watch all of these. Um my goal is always to um uh and make make a table of contents that's clickable and you'll see the unclickable table of contents in the in the description but if you click on show more you'll see the clickable um, table of contents so you can go right to the uh, problems you have questions about or you can just watch the whole thing and of course you can manually go backwards and forwards so hopefully this video will help and the notes will be published in Module 2 in Canvas. So be sure to contact me with questions. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.